Hello, my name is Teresita Blanco de Asi Sister and today we're reading Sato Nastara Nalini. This is chapter 5, part 1, The Hunt. Life went by uneventfully for a year. From time to time, someone got sacrificed. I noticed that whenever someone got sacrificed, the faint wrinkles in my father's face became invisible. Heck, all of the adults seemed to get younger and younger after each sacrifice. I also noticed that my aging progress slowed down whenever I attended a sacrifice. After my first visit, I did not attend any future ceremonies, and my father was much relieved by, so, by such general events. Our relationship softened throughout the year, and from time to time he would have me enter his study to test out a new mind, mind, mind reading, a new mind block spell. This spell did work whenever he was focused on blocking my thoughts, however. They were useless whenever I caught him by surprise. He had his assassins test how far I could perceive their presence, and after much trial and error, they gave up on trying to figure me out. Indeed, my senses were sharper than most of my kind, and they only grew the more I used them. And by now, I was keenly aware of what was happening in half the world. The only problem that these senses were limited because and were limited because I was inhabiting a body that was not my own. Despite these limitations, I became aware of some life forms that lived below the open city. At first, these life signals felt faint, almost imperceptible. The more I focused on them, the more I became aware of their presence. And to better focus on them, I would lay flat on the ground and I would close my eyes and focus all of my senses on what lay below. One day, my father called me to lying flat on the ground. The way I crawl around my room forced him to ask, What the hell are you doing? Looking up from my work, I said, nothing. Okay, carry on, he said, closing the door. Later that day, I decided to look for a better vantage point. At random points in town, I used to crawl on the ground, and I tried to avoid prying eyes, and from time to time, a girl, a lady, or a soldier would ask me, what are you doing? I stoically ignored their prying questions, and every so often, I played the flute on the ground, in the garden's palace, and I felt that something was close to the surface, and I played my fruit and waited for the response. And the figure seemed to have stopped walking, and the connection felt faint, but at least I was making some progress, and my concentration broke when I felt a hostile presence invading my personal space. As it always happened, my focus shifted towards the hostile element, and I felt myself watched by someone hiding among the trees, and the person seeing that it had felt to surprise me departed. And when he left, I turned my attention back on the ground, and I could not sense the presence, the presence that I was searching for anymore. I gave a sigh of frustration, and I lay back on the ground, and the trees provided some shade, shade. And I surveyed the sky in search of a single cloud. The sky seemed immaculate, immaculate blue. And I closed my eyes, and I enjoyed the pure air. And from time to time, I caught wind would pass by, and the sun's rays too felt cool. And I felt myself for the first time in a long time falling asleep. And my limbs felt, uh, felt loose and serene. And my spirit yearned for the blue pure sky. And in my dream I soared into the sky. And I flew high above the forest over the clouds. And even, and even towards the sky belt. And I made it to tighten itself. And I flew so high that I saw the roundness of the world. And suddenly I felt a, fed, a feather pulling me down, down, down below, and I felt my body pass into the ground, the ground, and the basements, and the rocks, and in the deepest darkness, where no light shone, I saw them. When I awoke, I saw Grimir sleeping beside me on the ground, and he had the peaceful look of a corpse. Time, Bo? Uh, ten minutes. I decided to let him rest in peace, and while he rested, I went back to searching for those mysterious beings I had seen in my sleep, and unlike last time, I had a pretty decent idea of what I was searching for. The beings I saw reminded me of the elf boy from the Wanderer's memory. I pinpointed the location on one in a matter of minutes, and this one felt like a girl, 13 or 15 years of age, and she seemed to be feeling the walls with her hand in the darkness. She stopped as if listening for something. And then she continued on her path again. I played my flute against the ground, and the girl heard the uh, heavy sound. And the sound, this music was not new to her, and she reacted by covering her ears. She seemed to yell at the top of her lungs, and her hysteria brought the attention of other beings from on the ground. And unlike her, when they heard the flute, they became enthralled. And 
Tina released and says they were not my target. In vain they tried to calm the girl and the strain of fighting my influence made her faint. And the two who came to her eye carried her limp body down below away from my influence. I felt a pat on my back and turning around I saw Gramir sitting beside me. He had a puzzled look on his face. And I rested my face in my hands and I gazed back at his sad eyes. His bewildered look changed to one of admiration and he began to gently stroke my hair in a soft whisper he said, You truly are very beautiful. The real Nalini would have blushed and I simply stared back at him and giggled and even without my flu, Grimia was wrapped around my little finger. I rolled to my back to to get a better look at him. If he wasn't if he wasn't an elf, I might have fallen in love with him. He was a handsome devil, although my affection for him was the kind of affection one has for a dog. And I sat up and drew his and drew his face closer to mine, and I drew him so close that I could taste his hot breath. And it was the first time that Nalini had ever truly kissed Grimir, and first I kissed his lower lip, and then locked both my arms around his neck, and I kissed him again and again, and as I drew back, I bit his lower lip. His lower lip, yeah. He seemed to be frozen in place as if he doubted his senses, and I pushed him back and while well, pretending to blush, and I left the garden giggling. Was keeping back home, I saw my father reclining against a column with his hands folded. That epic waiting mannerism was typical of humans. Originally, when an elf wanted to speak to you, he simply just walked up to you. There were no gimmicks or, or, or special effects about it. Your sense of community made relations both informal and respectable. I could not tell what he was thinking, and he passed his hand over his head and he gave a sigh. And slowly, weighing every word, he said, Nalini, how long have you been living with us? Not knowing where he was going, I said, uh, two years, five months? Then you should know by now that we elves do not kiss, handhold, or nothing. We give physical contact to a bare minimum, and I don't even sleep in the same room with my wife. What you did was very inappropriate, even for a human. So she kissing the guy was, uh, was, uh, was something that the elves don't do. So she like broke character. He spoke those words in the same tone he used to when he called the Danini. Sheesh, I'm not stupid. I kissed the alpha here because he wanted to kiss me. Plain and simple, I responded, raising my voice. My father went towards me and he dragged me by the, by the yard into the house. In anger he whispered, Quiet girl, do you want everyone to hear you? I released myself from his pincer grip and I snapped. You forget yourself, Valani. I'm not, the, I'm not some weakling you can push around. Suddenly his face flushed red in anger and he opened his mouth and he closed it again. And I saw magic gathering around him and luckily someone who knew my father passed by. I left my old and he talking to his colleague and I was appalled by his audacity and I kid skipped past my whole house and went towards the forest and I felt tears rolling down my cheeks and I was so angry that I felt like crying and I made my way back to the lake and I went through a, and the nymph rose to the surface of the water. In a soft voice she asked, do you have a stupid fight with your father? Sitting down on the lake I say, oh but he's such a jerk telling him me what to do. How dare he outshow him? Time, bro? Yeah, yeah, six minutes. The name said, don't let it get to you. Odani has always been like that. Ah, I see he's your jerk, har your jerk brother, Harmony, I snap. So that was like her name. Smiling, she sent my ha half her face into the water. She said, Nalini, you knew what to expect. You said so yourself. All purebred elves are jerks, and that still doesn't make them bad people. I sometimes wonder, I said thoughtfully, Harmony, what is the elf's life? I don't know, when I when I came to, I was bound to this lake, and I sometimes worry about what occurred if this lake dries up. My knees and her head below the water. Nothing is binding you to this lake, you're just simply afraid to get out of it because it's your, because it's your safety spot, I snapped back. Harmony said nothing, she simply sat back down the lake, and I felt sorry for her, and I wanted to apologize, however I couldn't bring myself to admit that I was at fault. I felt the silence gathering around him, me, and the silence brought with it a feeling of peace and serenity, and I dried my tears and forgave my foolish father. Smiling utterly below my breath, I breathed, I said, Proteus. By now the darkness had fallen, and a purple mist emanated from the ground. The mist was a spell. And I felt its influences overpowering, and the more I tried to
to see a way the heart of the maze pulled me towards the ground. My car no longer sleep, however, the Oscar had yet to conquer sleep, and my body and the open body I was inhabiting fell to the ground, paralyzed. My, with my body crippled and my senses returned to normal, and the silence grew restless in the presence of strangers, and five clock men walked in my direction, and the man leading them was a powerful mage, theoretically speaking. Time, bro? Yeah, four minutes. After all, paralysis spells could only do so much, and the men behind the mage carried a small shell with them. And the mage came up to me and he flipped me over. One of his underlings looked at me and he said, This one kinda looks familiar. The mage snapped. They all look familiar, fool. Yes, yes, I know, I know, but wasn't this one off limit? As one of his helpers. He, took, he got a good look at me in the face, and I did look familiar to him, and he decided to take me with them. He said to the other, Let's just take her with us. To meet tonight's quota. Well, let Le Lenny sort things out. The mage placed a red bracelet on my hand, and then he threw me over his shoulder and, we and went on ahead. While he came with me, I looked around, and my eyes were closed, and I had to use my true sight to look past my closed eyelids. And when I saw them, an old forgotten memory of Nalini popped up. Nalini remembered a story that La Donna had told her. He said that when naughty children wander away from their homes, the dark elves would take them away. It was also said that in pitch black nights like this when the dark elves would rise from the earth to carry the elf children down below with them, and those that taken were sacrificed to their god of death, Arasa. Tell that these were kept running to Nalini's head, and at first I had believed that the dark elves were simply the boogeyman. Now that they were taking me away, I realized that there was some truth behind those stories. It did not humor me much the idea of getting sacrificed, however, more we can be also it made me play along with their charade. And at a certain point in the forest, the dark elf stops, and the maze set a word of magic, and the ground swallowed us up whole. And the magic shield kept the earth from falling over us, and like an elevator, we went down for what seemed like hours. And eventually, I saw a huge city below us, and it was carved into the rocks, into the cave rocks. And the house design looked similar to the homes of the light elves, except that they were, um, except that they were underground. The Houses were made of granite, black onyx, and agates, and many of their homes' location, as if, it, as if they had stood there for countless millennia. And in the center of the city had an underground had an underground lake and river, and both were fed by water that flowed from the rocks. And over time, the river had eroded the ground and created an underground cavern. Time, bro? Two minutes. The roof of the cave had many holes covered by the tree foliage and roots. And at the center of the lake there stood a small temple-like structure. The temple had columns holding up a marble roof, and the roof had a drum holding up a thick dome, with an oculus at its center. And over that home shone the bright moonlight, and the cave's roof was hollowed out, letting the moonlight enter. And based on its angles, I could tell that a meteor had created that hole, and it was a wonder how I had managed to miss such a large opening. During my wanderings, when my kidnappers landed, they were greeted. Play they were greeted by playful children, and together they shear our captors. Light of high and mighty, soon to lose their life. For years you looked down on us, and now you shall become one of us. Let the eternal night commence. It is your just recompense. Terror was shown in the hearts of the children that have been captured, and I was simply amused. The main said happily, "Make way for your new brothers and sisters, children." The mage and his attendants took us prisoners to a raised wooden structure, which stood before the lake, and they chained us with the other brew, and they chained us together. And when the mage had us safely bound, then he negated the spell and paralysis spell he had placed on us. However, I was the only person who was still spellbound. The girl to my lips started shrinking in the most pitiful manner, and the boy cried beside me, calling for his mother. And a crowd of dark elves assembled before us, simply laughing and jeering. And due to the lack of light, the prisoners could not make heads or tails of their surroundings. And their fright and imagination created fantastic visions of the dark elves and their city. And each one more terror horrifying than the last. And I was the only prisoner who was calm, composed, and a little bored. Time, bro? A less than a minute. The crowd suddenly fell silent. And like they made, 25 seconds. And they made a pass for five minutes. And I... The mage leading there had a scroll in his hand, and he mounted the, the stage and, and inspected the inventory. He noticed my red-colored bracelet, and he asked me, Name? Nalini, I responded. Bye-bye, God bless. 